But first tonight, a big story. DFAT's outrageous meeting with a global terrorist. Just over three years ago, the United States declared that this man, Kays al Khazali, and his brother, specially designated global terrorists. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said al Khazali and the group he runs use violence and terror to further the Iranian regime's efforts to undermine Iraqi sovereignty. They're funded and trained by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. The United States will put forward a resolution in the Security Council to extend the arms embargo on Iran. Iran has refused to join the regional and the international consensus for peace and is, in fact, today, actively working to undermine the peace process by continuing its long global efforts to support militant groups there. Most people know about Iran's proxy networks in the Arab world, but the regime also has a relationship with the Taliban and related groups, such as the Khanis, the Tora Bora, and the uh, Mullah Dadula group. The Taliban's entanglement in Iran's dirty work will only harm the Afghanistan people. Al Khazali was declared a terrorist for good reason. His group claimed responsibility for more than 6,000 attacks against the United States and coalition forces since 2006. They carried out highly sophisticated operations, including mortar attacks on an American base, the downing of a British helicopter, an attack on the Karbala provincial headquarters, and this resulted in the capture and murder of five American soldiers. They also approved the use of lethal force against protesters for the purpose of public intimidation. Not only is al Khazali declared a global terrorist, but the United States slapped sanctions on him and banned any American from doing business or interacting with him. The attack in Karbala that led to the murder of five American soldiers was backed by Iran and made international news. But here's what's extraordinary. While the United States has banned any citizen from engaging with this brutal terrorist, Australia has a different approach, a perplexing approach. al Khazali was given the courtesy of a civil meeting with Australia's ambassador in Iraq in January this year, just two months ago, a meeting that DFAT seems to have failed to disclose anywhere publicly. Here's the photograph from that meeting, captured and posted on social media. It took DFAT a week to answer our questions about why our Australian ambassador chose to meet with this terrorist. Eventually, a DFAT spokesman said, and I quote, in pursuing Australia's national interest, diplomats must engage with a range of people, not all of whom will share our views. Australia's ambassador to Iraq has met with K.L. Khazali in his capacity as secretary general, general of his political party and are a member of Iraq's coordination framework government. Now, the political party that they mention is, in fact, the group declared a terrorist organization by the United States. The DFAT spokesman went on to say that the ambassador routinely seeks meetings with all political leaders in Iraq and that these conversations deepen Australia's understanding about the political and economic settings in Iraq. And they point out that Australia has not designated his group a terrorist organization. Now, Liberal Senator Claire Chandler, who would join me to discuss this in a moment, she asked DFAT officials about this controversial meeting in Senate estimates. They gave unacceptable answers, feeble answers, and they didn't make clear why they thought it was appropriate to meet with a terrorist who had killed so many Westerners and carried out, by their own admission, more than 6,000 attacks. Is the department aware of this meeting? Yes, Senator. Is this the same case Al Khazali who is listed as a, as a specially designated global terrorist by the United States? He's listed by the US, yeah. Um, given that designation by our ally, what would be the circumstance in which an Australian ambassador would be meeting with a designated terrorist? He's head of a political party in Iraq, Senator. He. Uh, his party has a minister in the current Iraqi government. So the ambassador, as part of her ongoing um, work to be in touch with various um, political actors, political party leaders in the country, um, to be across political developments, has met this individual. 
So the man declared a violent global terrorist by our allies, the United States, for murdering U.S. citizens and coordinating 6,000 attacks against the U.S. and coalition forces. The man who has had sanctions slapped on him so harsh that no American can interact with him. He sits down to break bread with Australia's ambassador. According to the highly respected Washington Institute, after the October 2021 Iraq elections, in which al Ghazali's party dropped from 15 seats to around four, he rejected the election results and publicly threatened the stability of Iraq. He then authorised violent protests against the government that resulted in at least one death, and he coordinated a drone attack on the house of the Prime Minister, Mustafa, in November 2021. I asked a former senior official at the State Department in Washington whether this meeting was appropriate, whether they thought it was appropriate for Australia's ambassador to sit down with a terrorist. Here's what the former State Department senior official told me. They said, this is a highly unusual meeting and I would want to know the purpose of it, the content of what was discussed and whether or not Australia consulted their friends and partners in Washington prior to the meeting taking place, given this individual is behind attacks that have killed Americans. My source said, this deserves an answer from DFAT to explain why this happened, what was discussed and what the outcome was, because American officials, particularly our ambassadors, do not meet terrorists who have killed Australians.